Hello everyone. So in this video, I will show you how you can uh, use two uh, different databases in a single Spring Boot application. So what I have here now is a very simple uh, Spring Boot application. So I have uh, just imported the Spring Boot's data GPA module and uh, the MySQL connector. We will be using MySQL, an external database, to see our results. So what I have here at the moment, uh, I have my entities, so I have a user entity and a product entity, so they are both very simple. I mean, just an ID, two fields, and my constructor and the uh, empty constructor for JPA. I have my uh, repositories for each uh, enti entity, user repository and product repository. Uh, my database is defined as follows. So this is the coordinates of my database. It's a local MySQL database. And these two properties, they are not mandatory for H2, for example, but for MySQL, you have to add them. And finally, our entry point, our main class, um, where I have my init method that is called after the build of the application and I just create and uh, persist my entities. So let's run our program. So this is the database I'm using right now, only this one. So our program indeed uh, created our table product, our, our table user. And let's see the data inside. Um, So our entity was persisted in user and let's see product. And we have our entity in product as well. So what I want to do now uh, is to persist each one of these in two different databases. So I want product uh, to be in one database and user to be in another database. So let's see our databases. Okay, Codinor DB1 will be used for user, and now we will use Codinor DB2 for to store the products. So what we have to do now is to separate the entities and the repositories. Each one should belong to a single package. So let's create our package for each one of them. And the same for repository. Okay, second thing we need to create configuration classes for each of our data source. So let's create the first one for uh, 
the first data source, so which will store the user, for example, let's call it user db. Uh, we could find a better name, but let's stay with this. User db configuration. Oops, this should be the one. So this is a spring configuration. For this uh, database configuration, we will enable the transaction management. And we will enable our repositories. Okay, we will add some uh, arguments here later. Uh, so what we have, what I want to say is when right now by using this single database, Spring did a lot of things for us to make things easier. And in fact, what's be happening behind the scenes, Spring created our data source from these uh, key values. And then it created uh, an a entity manager factory and a transaction manager for this data source. And this all behind the scenes, so the developer doesn't have to care about this. If we want to use two databases, then the user has to do to create these classes, uh, to, to create these beans manually. And this is what we are doing right now. So let's create our uh, data source. So how I like to do it is to uh, create a data source properties bin. So this is a B. Return new data source properties. Okay, so this is right now empty. Uh, we will tell a Spring to build our bean using this data here. And this is made with the configuration properties annotation. And we give it these suffixes here. So here we are creating two databases. So I would like to separate uh, one and one. And our second data source two, two, two. And we have two. I think I don't miss anything. Okay. And then we, for the first data source, we give this prefix. Okay, so this is a configure, uh, this is a data source properties. This is not yet the data source itself. Let's create a data source now. It 
takes as argument our data source properties here. As we will have uh, two data sources and two data source properties for the uh, I just want to make sure that we inject the right bin and by using this qualifier and we give it the name of our data source. And that's it. Okay. And from here we use our builder from the TS properties. Initialize our source builder and just we build. It already has everything. Next, the entity manager factory. Uh, here we use a lot of local container entity manager factory B. User DB. There we will inject our data source again. Oops. And an entity manager factory builder. And this one is provided by Spring himself and he will inject uh, our this bin automatically. Uh, as we will have again a second data source later, let's make sure we inject the correct data source by using our qualifier. So here the name of the piece they match, okay. And from there we return the data source. So we give it our user data source. And here we give it the package of the beans of the sorry of the entities that will be managed by this entity manager. So here we have we give it the the user entities. So we can give it either the class or uh, we give it the package name. I like to give it the class in case we move our entities. And then we build. Okay, and finally we build the, tra uh, the transaction manager. Transaction manager user mm, yes transaction. Okay, as we have, we will have a second configuration which will hold again another data source. Uh, Spring needs here a primary data source, so we mark this as a primary. The data source as well and the transaction manager. Okay, so this is for the first data source. We have our um, entity manager factory which will produce an uh, entity manager and our transaction manager now we will do the same for the product uh, configuration so it will be very similar so I will pause the video and come back when it's created okay so this is our product DB configuration for our second uh, database and it's very similar to the first one, so we make sure that we removed this, the primary annotation because we uh, decided that the user DB will be the primary uh, data source. And what is missing is uh, the arguments I was talking about here in the JPA repository. 
So again, we define the base package for our user repositories. So we will take the repositories the repository where this class belong that class entity manager factory reference this one and our transaction manager reference which is this one So here is the second product DB configuration. It's very similar to the first one. I added the GPA repository arguments, so the base package of our product repository, the entity manager, and the transaction manager, as they are defined here. And I corrected a little typo here. I used data source instead of DB. And for user, we have the same. So let's run our program now. Okay, let's persist this pin as well. And let's see in the database. So. so in this database, we have only one table, which is correct. which holds the right data. Let's see the, the second database, db2, show tables, correct, and let's see. Okay, so now we managed to uh, persist our entities in two different databases by using our these configuration classes so as you can see except moving uh, the, pro the entities and the repositories to different packages I mean to split them from the same package we didn't change our code another thing I would like to mention is about this uh, hibernate relationships like one to many one to one etc some people, by using two different databases, still wants to have those relationships. Let's say user wants to have many products, one to many products. This is not possible here. Why? Because entities should be managed by the same persistence unit. If they are managed by the same persistence unit, then yes, we, you can use the one to many, many to many relationships. Here, each one of the entities is managed by uh, a different persistence unit. That's why you cannot use uh, such relationships. It is possible to merge two persistence units into one and thus use such kind of relationships, but this is out of the scope of this tutorial. So I hope it was clear and if you have any questions or something needs to be more detailed, detailed, then please just ask. Thank you very much.